first day here in Bellevue, Washington, a suburb of Seattle, where the windows get to be open. I'm so happy we've got window open day. Let's jump into today's topic. I'm so excited to share this with you. And a couple of things happened with clients this week that I thought would be really beneficial for all of us. So I wanted to share. Today's topic is how to, or two unconventional secrets to go from dread to ease, possibly even joy in your weight loss journey. Okay. So I want you to just check in if you've ever felt dread changing what you eat or thinking about changing what you eat or giving up what you think, you know, you'd have to give up foods that are enjoyable, even dread moving your body, getting started exercising, or you dread thinking about, okay, I need to like, build some muscle, or you might dread in general, just change. Let's talk about dread. Okay. Such a fun emotion. Now I want you to hear this with lots of love. Dread is a normal human emotion. And it means two things. And I'm going to give you the two secrets right on top. Okay. This is so important because so many of us struggle with this feeling of, I don't want to, AKA dread type of a thing. Like I don't want to do it. And there are two reasons why it's not because you don't have willpower. It's not because you're broken. It's not because you're menopausal. It's none of that stuff. It's because you're human. And the two unconventional secrets are this. When you dread doing something, let's just use first example. When you dread, um, uh, starting to say, uh, a muscle building program. Like it's so important as we age to continue to build our muscles because all of the hormones as they're dropping, uh, our testosterone drops or estrogen drops and the muscle, um, fibers just start to deteriorate. And it's one of the most important things for longevity and immunity and all these things. So you, when you might be dreading, oh, okay, muscle, got to build the muscle. There are two reasons why the first reason is usually I'm not quite sure how to start and it seems so big. So that first um, unconventional secret, if you will, as to why we have dread is because our brains go to this all or nothing thinking, this black and white thinking, I'm not sure how to do it. And my brain's going to say, oh my gosh, it seems so big. Seems like so much to learn or to like undertake and, and like literally like on a physiological, biological, um, uh, level, our systems are saying, Oh my gosh, it seems like it'll take too many calories. I can't figure it out. Right? So what we do is we say, okay, dread is actually just an indicator that our brain's going to this black and white thinking. That's the good news. You have a human brain that's just going to black and white thinking. And whenever we try something new or do something new or working to change something, it's always going to do this. So you're not broken. So what we do instead is we're like, okay, what's my brain, you know, trying to say. So let me give a quick little example. I was working with some clients this week and one of the clients was, um, dreading, um, starting some, some, some exercising. Right. And it's so normal. And so what we did is we just brought it down to what her brain was actually making that big black and white thinking look like. So we actually laid out verbally the big picture of, oh, this is what it would mean. And, oh, I don't know how to do this. And this would mean, and underneath it, there were some pains from her past, which we all have. Like who didn't feel uncomfortable in PE growing up or who didn't feel, you know, awesome going to the gym all the time. Totally. Okay. But what we did was we just compassionately looked at what her brain was telling her. And then we broke it down into tiny, tiny, tiny doable steps. Okay. And this is a specific process that I take my clients through, but when your brain is dreading, that's all it means. It means you're normal. And it means it's going to this big black and white thinking, not sure how to do it. And so it, I'm going to aggrandize it. Right. So what we did was we said, okay, what is something tiny, tiny, tiny that you can do? That's a no brainer that you can put in your schedule. Okay. And we start small. This is not to become Arnold Schwarzenegger overnight, my friends. Okay. Nor do we need to become Arnold Schwarzenegger in general. But what we did was this, okay, what does your brain and your inner wisdom really say that is totally doable for you? And it sounded like just a few minutes of a couple of exercises twice a week between two to five minutes twice a week felt like a no brainer. You don't need to go to the gym for an hour. This is not how we go to the, this is one of the biggest things that I see is like, oh, I don't want to go do it. Cause our brains have this like conditioning. I've got to go to the gym for an hour. No, 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 no. That doesn't work. Okay. It hasn't, has it <laughs> right? Bring it down to something tiny. 
what seems like a no-brainer and what we're doing there is we are building the habit of showing up for you building the habit of bringing your brain down from that black and white thinking that all or nothing thinking to building the habit of I can do this and I can do this and so if you do three to five minutes twice a week you get to celebrate the heck out of yourself and what that ha- what that does naturally is you're like oh, I can do that and then naturally what starts to happen is you want to add a couple of extra minutes and then your body's able to do a couple of extra minutes okay so this is the first unconventional secret that's behind dread it's this black and white thinking that all or nothing thinking okay now let me give you the second unconventional secret about dread I hear a lot oh I'm just kind of dreading I don't you know I dread want to giving up the food or you know dread tracking my food or anything like that there's a reason for that too and the underlying reason is not what you're probably thinking the underlying reason why we dread like change or dread kind of looking at what we're eating or kind of bringing it to our awareness is because we haven't learned the um, specific tool set of compassion. So think about it like this. One of my um, one of my clients just recently said, "Yeah, I didn't, you know, I didn't want to track my food before because I didn't want to look at it." And that's an example of this. When we think, "Oh gosh, if I have to track my food, and you know, it's going to be like this big ordeal, and it's going to take so much time, and I don't really want to see what I'm eating." What that tells me and what I want you to hear is that we just haven't learned how to be compassionate in the process. Because what we often do, so many of us, we kind of just put our head in the sand, especially as we get older and we've maybe tried uh, several things to lose weight. We kind of just put our head in the sand, don't want to look at it because of the harsh judgment that we will give ourselves when we pull our heads out of the sand. Resonate? Okay. If this resonates, give me a thumbs up or give me a yes okay if the the dread with the the black and white thinking give me a let let me say it like this give me a two if it resonates that um you don't you your head's in the sand and you're afraid of that judgment they're gonna have when you come out give me a one if you're dreading because of black and white thinking usually there's a combination of both okay all right so think about that we are just so afraid especially because we're high achievers we want to do well it's painful to take our head if you will metaphorically out of the sand and look at it because we're going to judge ourselves so what that means is actually what if your brain is wired to judge and judging that it judges and hiding from it just causes suffering because that's what happens that's what happens with brains and so what i want to offer you here if you find yourself thinking oh i don't want to quite do that i want to do this and underneath it you know it's like hard to look at give yourself one tiny little thing like with the last one so let's say it's tracking your food or it's changing one little thing choose one little thing give yourself like a tiny little spot of time to do it so like with one of my clients we talked about tracking I'm like put it super easy make it one minute at the end of the day one and a half minutes just put it in your calendar I don't care just like make it super easy And then be super kind to yourself as you write it down. Write it down. Being a a person that is speaking to herself kindly. Think about yourself like a little baby that you love or a little pet that you love. And as you're writing it down, notice any of the judgment come up. And how would you speak to a little child or a little creature that you love who was writing that down? And practice that. Okay, those are the two secrets. These are the found of the reason why especially as we age that it has been so challenging for us to release the weight this compassion and the black and white thinking and dread on top of it all okay and that's really kind of how you reverse engineer it so I would love to get your feedback tell me if any of that resonates for you and tell me put hashtag replay in the box if you're if you're listening on replay and uh, if you have any questions shoot them out to me and if you would like more support diving deep to solve your reason why you've struggled and really lose the weight for the last time i'm your girl i got your back Uh, send me a message and we can hop on a call and uh, get that solved for you okay have a wonderful weekend bye-bye